Hello everyone, welcome to problem 1.12 of John Thompson's A Modern Approach to Quantum Mechanics. So, again, this problem is going to be very similar to problems 1.11 and problems 1.10. We have a state psi, um, which is pretty similar to the states we've worked with before. So, it just doesn't have a complex um, number in it. It's just 1 half times plus c plus root 3 over 2 times minus c. And the second half of this problem is essentially what we've done before. The first, uh, I would say that's three-fourths of the problem. The first one-fourth of this problem <laughs> is figuring out, um, since this state is not aligned along z, x, or y completely, it lies along some angle from, you know, if we define our uh, coordinate system like this, where x is going out of board, y that way, we have z going up, x, y. Remember our state n here is a generic state um, for a two-state system that allows us to parameterize it in any state in terms of this theta and phi um, number. So it is cosine of theta over two plus e to the i phi sine of theta over two um, written in the z basis. So um, where phi is the angle from the x-axis going along the plane, going around the plane on the x-y plane, going around that way, so that's phi. And theta is measured from the z-axis, um, kind of going down like this, um, you know, from zero to uh, pi over two. So you can get any, you know, if you think of it as a sphere, um, you can reach any point along a sphere with two coordinates, theta and phi. You go um, along the surface of the sphere, I should say, not any point inside the sphere, but any point on the surface of the sphere, you can get um, to any point. And so you can kind of define, this is what they call the block sphere, and you can kind of define any point on this block sphere, on the surface of the sphere, with the two numbers, theta and phi. And so we want to know what direction you know, what, what theta and phi um, um, does this state have? Like what direction is that aligned to um, along this like block sphere in a way? So if you compare our state here, we see that there's no complex term and on the second term. And so the only way to get rid of this e to the i phi is to make phi equal to zero because e to the i zero, anything raised to the zero power is just one. So already we can see that our phi here is going to be zero. So we're not going to be rotated um, at all um, this way. It's going to be uh, along the x axis essentially. <clears throat> However, we have to figure out what our theta is. And I, you know, this is just me kind of plugging and checking for different values of theta. So we chose theta equal to pi. Well, then this first term would be cosine of pi over two, which is zero. Well, this term is not zero, so we know that's not right. And try pi over three. If we plug that in, we get cosine of pi over six, and from our unit circle, cosine of pi over six is root three over two. Well, that's not right. That's that term. So it's kind of swapped there. Um, you can actually figure this out by saying, okay, I, theta here is my x value. That's what I want. That's the variable I need to find. So I'm just going to name it x. So x over two, I want that to equal pi over three because I know that cosine of pi over three is a half. And I know that sine of pi over three is root three over two. So that's what I want this to equal. So you just solve for x. And this is just simple algebra. So x is equal to pi over three. So if you plug in two pi over three for theta, well, the twos cancel and we just get pi over three, which gives us what we want. So um, theta equal to 2 pi over 3, you get cosine of pi over 3, which is a half, and sine of pi over 3, which is root 3 over 2, which gives us the correct values there for those terms. So theta, in this case, for our state, is 2 pi over 3, and phi is 0. So it'd be like, basically, um, pi over 3 is like 120 degrees, so it's past, it's past the, uh, the vertical or the whole, like it's past the 90 degrees, it's kind of slightly downward. So it'd be kind of like somewhere along the surface of the sphere down here, along the x-axis. 
if you were to think about it in the block sphere uh, case. But that's that's our values. So that's the first part. Um, moving on to finding the expectation expectation values for uh, the z, x, and y um, components of spin. This is something we've done before. Um, I'm gonna blaze through this because if you've been following the problems before like you should already be comfortable with this so um you find the the inner products for plus z and minus z and you get one half root root two that's just the components there since we're already in the z basis it just picks out those components and then the probability you just take the magnitude square of those terms you get a fourth and three fourths for the probability of each and then the expectation value of the equation again is the probability times the value plus the probability times the value for all the different probabilities um, that you have. In this case, it's just a two state system. So we get a fourth times h bar over two plus three fourths times minus h bar over two. Um, that gives us h bar over eight um, minus three h bar over eight, which becomes minus two h bar over eight, which is minus h bar over four. So that's something we've done before that hasn't changed at all since problems 1.10 and 1.11. That stayed the same. For the x component here, we pick out the, we find the inner product of, of plus x and psi. Um, this is gonna give us, so we have one over root two plus z plus minus z, and this is in the bra form, and then times the ket form of our vector. So this is just, again, simple foiling. Um, you have one over two root two plus root three over two root two factor out one over two or two and write it as root two over four and you're left with one plus root three and then take the magnitude square of that to get the probability. The, you get one eighth when you square this and then you squaring this you get one plus two root three plus three which becomes one eighth times four plus two root three and uh, multiply through to get a half plus root three over four and then to find the other half, to find the, the probability for minus x, we just take our probability for plus x and subtract it from one. So we get one minus one half minus root three over four. And that gives us one half minus root three over four. So we have our two probabilities, plug them into the expectation value equation. We get one half plus root three over four times h bar over two, plus one half minus root three over four times minus h bar over two. And just doing the uh, multiplication here, we're going to have h bar over 4 plus 3 root 3 h bar over 8 minus h bar over 4 um, plus root 3 h bar over 8. The h bars over 4 cancel. You get 2 root 3 h bar over 8, which is just root 3 h bar over 4. So that is now our, our expectation value for the x component. Let's do the y. Um, again, just going to do plus y. We can find the minus y state by subtracting the minus y probability by subtracting from one. But the bra version of plus y is one over root two times plus z minus i minus z, where those are the bra forms, times our, our state psi. So we get one over two root two minus i root three over two root two when we multiply that through. Again, remember plus z minus z are orthogonal. So the inner products of those are zero, so the inner terms cancel. Take, um, you know, factor that out again. One over two root two is the same as root two over root two over four. So that's that. We factored out, so we have one minus root three in the parentheses. Take the magnitude squared. We get the magnitude squared of root two over four times one minus root three, which is one eighth times one minus two root three plus three. When you do the uh, foiling here. So then we get one eighth times four minus two root three, which if you multiply through, you get one half minus root three over four. So that's our probability for plus y. Now for minus y, just subtract it from one. So one minus one half plus root three over four, because you distribute the minus through. So it's like one minus this in parentheses. So that the second minus becomes a plus. And then uh, you get one half plus root three over four for the probability for minus y. So plug it all into the expectation value equation. You get the expectation value for plus y, uh, or sorry, the probability for plus y is one half minus root three over four times h bar over two, plus the probability for minus y, which is one half plus root three over four 
times minus h bar over 2. And you basically get the same answer here uh, for the most part. You get h bar over 4 minus root 3 h bar over 8 minus h bar over 4 and then another minus root 3 h bar over 8. So the h bar over 4 is canceled. You get a minus 2 root 3 h bar over 8, which simplifies down to minus root 3 h bar over 4, which is the same value with the minus sign as we got for uh, the x component of spin. So basically taking out any complex number here has made our expectation values for z hasn't changed at all. Whether it had a complex number or not hasn't changed. But when we took it out completely, our uh, expectation values here are the same in magnitude, um, but just with a minus sign on the y instead of a uh, plus sign. So that's really it. If you guys have any questions on this, let me know. Um, any clarifications you need, let me know. Um, yeah, feel free to drop a comment if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys in problem 1.13.